All right, hard truth time, and I'm going to give a clip to the anti-Israel faction here. There should be no lifting of the siege, and sending Gaza aid is a very, very bad thing. I'm make sure to clip it there before I add bad for the Palestinian civilians. So again, aid and lifting of the siege is going to be bad for the Palestinian civilians. Let's explain. This, a, a, despite what you're hearing on the BBC and, and CBC and mainstream media, is actually a war. And wars require military solutions. And the kindest and least casualty-free military solution possible would be an effective siege. Now, there's a lot of things. One, we all know most of the aid getting into Gaza isn't going into the hands of the Palestinian civilians. Like, the flour and food aid is already being uh, taken by Hamas and was resold at exorbitant prices to finance their own war effort. And then they'll probably take the food for themselves and give it to the fighters. They'll probably then leverage different food and aid to Palestinian civilians in desperation to have them join the war effort or be used as human shields or, or, or whatever. So they will make sure that the Palestinian civilians stay starving and poor and, 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 and emaciated so they can leverage more aid, which they get to themselves to keep the war going longer to kill many more Palestinian civilians, which has always been the main goal of Hamas. If you listen to any threats they make against Israel, it's we will destroy Israel and we don't care how many Palestinians we have to kill to get there. Now, let's back up a bit. This is a war. What do the Palestinians want? They just want freedom. No, they don't. No, they don't. That was 2005. Settlements. Every single Jew was removed from Gaza in 2005 by the Israeli military. The land was made Judenrein. It was, we just gave Gaza a state. We just, they just made it a state. They're like, you know, you know what? No negotiation. You're, you're now a free independent state, Gaza. Have at it. They had an election. Uh, Hamas won on a platform of global jihad and kill all the Jews. And then before they went to kill the Jews, they did take time to enact a brutal civil war, kill all the Palestinians who didn't agree with Hamas and the leaders there in a brutal civil war that gets no coverage in the media. And then they declared war in Israel and started launching rockets into them. 17 years later, after the October 7th terrorist attacks, Israel had enough and declared war back on Gaza. Now, as I said, this is actually a war. And we all pretend to ignore the fact that it's a war and the laws of war and the rules of war. And we say things like international law when Israel is involved because we all decide to collectively lose our minds. Now, if you want a legitimate peace, there needs to be a military solution here. Because if there is another ceasefire, which there have been tons of ceasefires between Israel, Hamas, uh, PIJ, you name it. A ceasefire in this region of the world is called a reload. If you give a ceasefire, an unconditional ceasefire, again, Hamas attacks Israel, and then they can't go in to save 200 hostages and eliminate a major terrorist threat that had declared war on them and invaded their territory. No, it's a military occupation. Again, not since 2005. Every soldier and every Jew was removed from Gaza. This isn't about sovereignty. This is about destroying Israel. Listen to them. They consider all Israel settlers even in Tel Aviv, a city built out in sand by Jewish and Zionist pilgrims in 1909, even that belongs to Islam according to them. You have to read Hamas's charter. This is a global jihad against every Jew in the world because they are Islamists. It's in their charter. You have to read it. So Hamas needs to be destroyed. Now, if you are so much better than all of us because you can just say, why doesn't the world just do peace like I want? Listen. The minute a group of Palestinians sit down in a park, play the bongos, and talk about a two-state solution and peace on earth, I'll pay attention to the peace movement in Palestine. But not for a second has there been a, a, a faction with any significant weight within the Palestinian population that has ever wanted peace or even tried for peace. So the only way to leverage peace is through strength. Now, this can either be done by carpet bombing Gaza and then going in and blowing up all the tunnels and mass civilian casualties and casualties of Hamas, because Hamas, in their own military doctrine, will mix civilians, hostages, and fighters into every single building. We already have it on video. I know the anti-Israel crowd will deny it to the max, but it's there. Okay? So, it's on you. If you really want to save Palestinian civilians, you're going to need some intellectual and moral courage. You're going to need to be able to think about what's going on here. And if you want an end to this with minimal casualties. You need to put pressure on the entire Gaza Strip through siege and starvation. Yes, there's no, there's no friendly way to fight a war, guys. 
and then you can leverage chaos inside the Gaza Strip. Maybe the militant, uh, local militant uh, tribal factions rise up against Hamas. They make deals in order for food with Israel, and then they start fighting Hamas. They lose control, and they're made unpopular. But the, the more you dump money and aid into the Gaza Strip, you're giving it directly to Hamas to strengthen their position there, keep their fighters fed, and the civilians poor to leverage more food and aid, which will give Hamas more strength and more money and more ability to keep this going longer and longer and longer. And the reason we're in this situation is because the global establishment media expert academic types don't have the moral courage or the intellectual honesty to talk about what wars actually mean and the fact that in wars people have to fight wars. So any method Israel's taken to fight the war, the anti-war faction will throw a hissy bit over. They will not say a single thing about the rockets still flying from Hamas into Israel. So if you really want to stop the war, you should support non-lethal means of warfare. If you want the minimum amount of deaths to happen to the Gaza civilians. And then, hey, leverage all the countries that are the most anti-Israel. Qatar. Hey, Qatar, how many Palestinian refugees do you want? I will liaise with the Israeli government to send as many Palestinians on a boat as long as they want. Right? You can, however many Palestinians want to go to Qatar, they can go on a boat and they will be guarded by U.S., Israeli, Canadian, whoever submarines. I will stand on the top of one of those submarines, hyped up on amphetamines like I'm a German tank commander going through the Ardennes in 1941. 1940? And, 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 I will, and I will protect every single one of them to make sure they get d directly to Qatar and nice, nice and safe and sound there. This is the type of leverage that we could use legitimately to reduce the amount of civilian casualties, undermine Hamas, get the hostages released, and, and find a, a lasting solution that has minimized Palestinian casualties. But this is totally off the table because no major faction of the Palestinian movement wants peace. They all want war. And they want genocidal war. And they complain when Israel fights the war. They wanted a one-sided genocidal war. They want all Jews to just lay down their arms and be burned alive, slaughtered, and, and massacred uh, accordingly. It's not going to happen. You're not going to just get all the Jews in the world to agree to, you know what, let's just let everyone kill, rape, and murder us. That sounds like fun. It's not going to happen. So if you do care about peace, and you do care about Palestinian civilians, you're going to have to live in something we call reality. And that means making hard choices. It means supporting non-lethal means of actual legitimate warfare over lethal means if you really want to sue for peace and prosperity in the lives of Palestinian civilians. But instead, just chanting from the river to the sea and, and fomenting the destruction of the Israeli state, well, that's when you get the bombs. And sorry, but any other country would do the same.